We have a freeze coming in our part of Texas tomorrow, and I always have to do special prepping for that, but we have extra things that I have to prep for. I'll bring you along for some of that. We have three mama does that might be having some babies this weekend. Just so happens on this freeze weekend too, which I'm concerned about. So I need to place their kindling boxes in, a little hay in, and then kind of see and watch them over the next two to three days to see if they start making a nest. Cause then I'll know that we do have some babies coming. So this is our first time. I, I'm pretty excited about that. We have 11 American breasts that are gonna be going to freezer camp in about two weeks. So I need to start fermenting their corn today. We did go get some raw milk from a local dairy Blossom Dairy in Blossom, Texas, which isn't very far from us. So that was a great find. So this will be our first time fermenting some corn with raw milk. We want to see if there's a difference with that. I'm very interested to see if we notice a difference, but it's supposed to be the ideal way to ferment their corn before you process them. You want some cheap cheeps? Cheepy cheeps? I don't trust Michael. He's in here. This group is just starting to lay these very small fairy eggs. These eggs are not big enough to feed us. And since this is our meat group, I don't mind them eating them. So I usually feed it to them and they'll eat it. My regular egg layers, I wouldn't let them do that because I don't want them to have the taste for it. But this is my meat group, so it's just not going to matter if they have some eggs. I've been giving them all the cracked eggs recently. Okay, we've got a few eggs. And those are just fake eggs. Oh, I don't know what's happened here. This is sweet potato. Losing a bird always causes me a lot of concern, especially in this situation. There was no evidence of a predator attack. There was no evidence of her having any issues yesterday. The only thing that's new and different is that our birds are out here in this field where a lot of rain fell and there's been a lot of water I'm having a hard time moving our hutch. It's stuck in the mud. The wheels are just real thick in the mud. And I am having a hard time moving that by myself. I'm wondering if something in this water has caused this problem. And that causes me great concern. Our poor sweet pea is gonna be put to rest in the compost. I snuck this girl in here last night. She's still staying with some blue coat. 
but she had a, an eye injury and they were picking on her and she's finally opened it and like it's way better it was really swollen and it looks terrible sweetest. They are so sweet. They've been so easy, these light brahmas. This is Kevin's girls, his new harem. This mud is a duck's dream. They have no complaints. They are living their best life and they love, love, love all of this messy mud. They're the only ones, unfortunately. None of the chickens like this. They're like, ew, just like me. Hey, Kevy Kev. That's my handsome Kevin. He's such a good boy. Recently, we just had our second tornado come through this area, and I saw more water than I've ever seen coming from our pond. It's higher on the house side. It's deeper and wider on the other side of the hill in front of the old barns and it's so much more saturated going towards the road. I don't know why the county hasn't dug the trench from one side to the other. It's on the city side, but Sid and I have to figure it out. Uh, about a month ago, Sid and I, we took and walked the property and put cones in the lowest set water area. The idea was to mark these areas so that we'll know as everything recesses exactly where that is as a visual reminder for part of our prepping to solve this problem. See, this is one side. This is how the ditch should look. Now, here's this side. Do you see where that other ditch is? This should be dug. This is... I don't know what I should do. Comment down below. Should I contact the city about this? It's dried the last few days, but this was just a pool of water that should be going that way. Because we had a lot come off of there. I covered our garden to prepare for this freeze coming. Ooh. put a brick over here for that. Aside from covering the garden with the frost cover, I'm also very paranoid about our water hoses. Last year, I learned a lesson about not disconnecting it. So now I have a habit of giving all the birds fresh water at the warmer part of the day and then disconnect all of the sprayers from the hoses and the actual hoses from the frost freeze hydrant because that is where a split took place last year. Not only did I have to replace three sprayers, but we had to replace uh, the nozzle that hooks up to the frost freeze hydrant. So that that's an expensive lesson. That's just kind of a habit I do. Also, because we ferment our feed, putting those buckets on my gorilla cart and pulling it into our shop is very important because it's just going to freeze the food overnight if I have it out where I have it normally. After pulling it into the garage, I typically will turn on the heater. I started a little low with it today. That way I can just kind of monitor about what the right temperature should be. I'm just trying to keep it above freeze. Last night I took a few of our trays and our cells and I soaked them in a Clorox bath in the bathtub. Got them nice and clean, been letting them dry. Sid and I are just biting at the chomp to start some hot peppers. 
So I've been going through all of those seeds and really just lusting after seeds I want to do. Let's go and check those out. I want you guys to see the seeds that we're about to start because peppers take longer. And for us, we're comfortable with starting with peppers like end of December, beginning of January. But I really think that this is something that we're going to work on this weekend. My priority with peppers is making some spices, making some sauces. I have all kinds of ideas now that I'm making seasonings. Recently, the Mindful Farmer reminded me about a pepper that I had seeds for and I just hadn't ever started. It's the most expensive pepper in the world, apparently, and I have it, the Ahi Sharpita. Now, this is a great pepper for making sauces and it has a fruity citrus aroma, so I'm kind of excited about it because it's similar to cayenne and I love cayenne. For those of you that are familiar with the sofrito condiment, I have a viewer, a subscriber of ours in Puerto Rico that sent us the ahi dulce pepper and it is very similar to the ahi sharpita. It's apparently a little sweeter. I really want to check out the comparison between the two since they look like they're in the same family of peppers. Now, Sid is really excited about the peach habanero, and we're also gonna do the chili habanero, and these make really great salsas. I believe he plans on doing an experiment with peach habanero, so you have to stay tuned for that one. Tabasco pepper is something that we've always intended to grow for making sauces, and so we're really gonna try again this year. We hadn't had success in the past, but it's something we both want. The Santa Fe Grande pepper is all me. I wanted this pepper. Apparently, it makes really pretty pickles, and now that I know how to make good pickles, I would like some really pretty ones, and these also are supposed to make really pretty salsas. The Sugar Rush Red Pepper is an experiment. It's supposed to have like a sweet and spicy, so this is just gonna be a curiosity one for me. The Korean Dark Green Pepper is just a curiosity grow for me. Sid and I, we grew up with a lot of Korean friends and with kimchi, all types of versions, and this pepper is supposed to be the best pepper to use for kimchis, so that's gonna be a fun experiment. These last two peppers are just staples for me, and truthfully, I ran out of cayenne. The season before last, I dehydrated a bunch, and that literally spiced all of my really good spicy pickles this past season, and I didn't grow any cayenne. I did grow jalapeno, and jalapeno came in handy for me, and it's just always gonna be a staple every year. So that's the last but not least, jalapeno. I'm interested in knowing all the things that you're prepping for before the end of the year. Comment down below and let us know. As you can see, there's a lot of things that we're prepping for. Not only the ice, but our bunnies and fermenting feed. Uh, so it, it's a lot. If you're interested in seeing a video that we did about fermentation, a little expanded version after getting some viewers feedback, I'll put that off to the side and down in the show notes below. Until the next time, thanks for joining me.